Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. Hi, my name is Lisa Feigenbaum and I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Visual Basic team. I'm here with Paul Vick today. Paul, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I've worked on the Visual Basic team for 10 years now, which is a whole decade, kind of hard to believe. Um, it's been a great experience, and actually I just recently moved to the Oslo team to work on some of the new technologies they're working on there. But uh, you know, as an old VB hand, I, I uh, having worked on the language for a long time, I, it has a special place in my heart, and uh, it's what I'm. T it's what I've been presenting at the PDC um, is about sort of the future directions of the language that I worked on until very recently. Great. Well, some. What are some of the up and coming trends in programming languages that you see and that you're trying to think about as you architect the Visual Basic language? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there there's sort of three major trends I think we're looking at. One. Um, one of which, uh, which we isn't really there's much to talk about yet is concurrency. You know, sort of as we move into the world of um, uh, program of uh, computers that have multiple cores and sort of the sure. the idea of you know getting performance out of multiple uh, process multiple threads of execution and that sort of thing. And that um, you know, as anyone who's ever taken a computer science class knows, it's like concurrency is one of the hardest <laughs> things in the world to get right. You know, people are inherently single threaded, so. Um, uh, so that's something that there's a lot of interest and in, in research going on um, in, across the visual languages about. Uh, there isn't anything concrete that's come out yet. There um, are some libraries uh, that have come out of our right, research. How about the parallel extensions? Exactly, exactly. Um, but as far as actual language impact, you know, we're sort of taking a conservative approach there. And so um, I expect that in the next 10 years that we'll be doing a lot there. But um, as of yet, it's not really clear what the direction for that will be. Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing that, uh, the second sort of trend is really um, looking at dynamic languages, dynamic and scripting languages. Sure. So, you know, in the visual um, language area, what we have um, is in addition to, you know, C Sharp and VB and C++, I mean, we also have now the Iron Python and Iron Ruby projects. And so um, a lot of the work, you know, VB actually already had a lot of dynamic features. Um, we have supported from the very beginning uh, dynamic binding and dy doing uh, dynamically sort of resolved um, operations and things like that um, through operations on the object type in our language. Right, the weight binder is something VB is really well known for. Exactly, yeah, yeah exactly, and it's and it's been a, you know a big a big area of investment for us on the team, um, and uh, it's uh, it's a quite interesting sort of piece of machinery. Um, and so now it's been great because we, you know, in addition to just now being Visual Basic, we've got these other languages that also integrate dynamic operations in a really um, deep way. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's so there's actually a whole team now that is, you know, specifically dedicated to making dynamic languages and dynamic features and languages um, efficient and work cross language. And so. Um, in the current version, we're integrating. We've done initial integration with the dynamic language runtime, which is that, the product of that team, mm -hmm. so that you'll be able to um, uh, produce objects in Python or Ruby, and then be able to call them and work with them uh, directly from Visual Basic. Um, the C Sharp language is also adding dynamic features, so they'll also be doing dynamic binding. So we'll also work well with them, and so you'll be able to um, also write new libraries that support dynamic operations if, if that's a kind of a, um, like in, in web scenarios that tends to be a, a pretty uh, useful feature. Yeah, so what are some of the top scenarios that, that this integration is going to enable? What's the new power to the VB and C Sharp languages that you'll achieve through their DLR integration? Well, I think, you know, I think the web is a good example. I think basically um, dynamic, dynamic operations are most useful in situations where you're dealing with data that you don't know about at the time at which you're building the application. So that's right. why, like the web, you're always integrating data that comes from, you know, from random sources on yep. the web, and where you don't may not know a whole lot about the structure. You know, some things about the structure, but not everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, database operations are another good example where dynamic operations can be very useful, um, especially if you want to be resilient in the face of changes to um, the format of data. So like if um, you don't want to, if you don't want to tie yourself to uh, the format of a particular field being an integer, maybe it will change into a float or something like that. 
um, dynamic operations uh, can be very useful in those cases. So they mm -hmm. to to achieve a more uh, loose coupling between uh, components or between an application and the data it works on. So how will this actually look in the VB language? So before with the late binder, you would declare a variable as object mm -hmm. and then you know you could use it later and it could be assigned to a new type. How, how does this work with the dynamic integration? Actually, it doesn't change anything at all. So from the, it's kind of interesting, you know. It's easy. Yeah, for the C-sharp <laughs> language, you know, they're, you know, they're adding a new keyword and some, a number of new language features. And for us, since we already um, support all these things, the support actually stays exactly the same. They're, the, all the changes uh, for now are under are sort of under the covers. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, as we get more scenarios where dynamic binding is used, and as the cross language scenarios kind of get more um, uh, used, I think we may look at you know additional changes to language to make it even easier. But you know, that's sort of a refinement we'll do over time. So sure, that uh, sounds pretty exciting. Yeah. And so the, any other trends? Yeah, yeah, the final the thing that we've been thinking about, and this is, I think, the most interesting one uh, I found the most interesting and kind of exciting, is um, really looking at how compilers. So the thing today is that you know what what you find is that you know the Visual Basic compiler is like this giant black box, <laughs> and, <laughs> and text goes in one side and out so the other end comes an assembly and. Um, you know, there's a, a huge ecosystem of tools that work on, um, you know, analyze source code or analyze programs, um, or people who would like to incorporate programmability, you know, like VB-like features in their pro in the programs. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very hard today because you've just got this big box, and and there's really nothing. You, you know, if if the big box doesn't fit what you need, that's you know, too bad. Um, so what we've been started to look at is. Opening up that box and allowing people to get at the individual services inside that. So, um, for example, if you're writing a tool that works, you know, if you wanted to do something that analyzed style of a sor uh, your source code style, um, enabling you to just call the Visual Basic parser and get back a set of parse trees. You know, wow. today, you know, most people um, most people build their own, compiler, right. and you know probably they don't get it right because it's you there's know, so it's, many intricacies. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, we spent a lot of time perfecting our own um, our own uh, um, capabilities that it's like you know it's it's hard to replicate that in, in a short period of time. And so, really, you know, what it it opens up, I think, a huge amount of possibility uh, possibilities for people. Um, you know, there's the obvious stuff about building tools that work on code and that kind of thing, but then. Um, there's sort of the more open sort of capabilities that we could sort of theorize further out. Um, whereas, you know, if we open up the compiler, maybe it would be possible to allow other people to write components that become part of the compilation process. Wow. So you could imagine being able to write extensions to the language um, without actually having to work at Microsoft on the Visual Basic <laughs> team, which would be a wonderful thing. I mean, that's much more uh, speculative. I mean, that's a that's an aspirational goal. Mm -hmm. um, it's not clear that uh, you know how that might work, but um, but clearly, I think if we could move to a more um, open situation where people um, could extend la the language in interesting ways, I think that would be a, a wonderful thing. So um, so that's something I think, you know, those are really uh, all three of the things, well, I guess dynamic will be appearing um, in a beginning way in our current in version. In Dev10, yeah, in um, DS10. Uh, but, um, but all the other ones are much more, you know, not tied to any particular release, you know, sort of more of a, something we're hoping to see over the, the next 10 years kind of thing. So. All right, well, thanks for sharing all that with us. I'm, I'm certainly excited for the future releases of Visual Basic. Thanks. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.